First and foremost, I want to give all the honours, the praises and the glory belongs to my Lord and Saviour. His name is Yahweh, Mahasham, Yahweh Shai, Mahasham, Mahavakar Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. In who I reverence and honours to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. We are living in the last days of the last days. And without further ado, we're going to flow with the spirit. And today, right? Today, I don't usually do this, but today is going to be basically be topics concerning spiritual warfare. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because it's only for our betterment. Topics concerning spiritual warfare. Right? And this is going to be basically, um, most people right now are not in this truth. What are they under? They're under some type of form of spell or whatever. And it's mostly people that don't believe that there is a God or devils. They're the ones that are most easily manipulated. So we're going to go to this Lord willing, this will be edifying, right? I've written down some words, right? Done my studies and Lord willing, this will be edifying. Okay. So let's start off on Luke, right? Actually, you know what? Go start off on Ephesians 6, right? And I know I might sound like a broken record, but it doesn't matter, right? You already know what we're going to bring out. And we have to be repetitive with this, okay? I always say, what you see in the physical, right? With people, however they're acting, that's all played out in the spiritual, the spiritual realm. There's spiritual forces that you cannot see that are operating on the minds of people, men, women, and children, that you cannot see. But we can see it. Why? Because we have a spiritual eye. The rest of the people can't see it. Okay. Go to Ephesians 6 and 10. This was Paul, because Paul had experience and he saw certain things in the spirit which others did not see. So he was warning, he was telling them of these particular things, which we're going to read about, right? It says, Finally, my brethren, right? Be strong in the Lord, Yahweh, wa Yahweh Shai, and in the power of his might. Our power is in Yahweh Shai's might. It's not, in, it's not in the physical. It's not in the physical. It's in the power of Yahweh Shai's might. Put on the whole armor of the heavenly father it doesn't say some little bit it says the whole armor the armor would be what a defense right that's our defense the armor which would be likened unto the words not physical armor not a bulletproof vest right not a teflon not the teflon vest None of, nothing like that okay and it says that you may be able to stand against the wiles wiles look that up in the greek it says methods, right? Methods, arts, cunning deceit, right? Wires, right? Knavery, right? Tricks, right? So the devil comes with tricks, different forms, okay? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It's not a flesh and blood battle. These are principalities that are operating in the spiritual realm, right? Yeah, in the spiritual realm, right? We're on earth, right? That's the lower level. So people that are up on earth, most of them are very low base. Then you have what? The clouds, that's one level. Beyond the clouds, what? The sky, what's that, right? What's beyond the sky? The space, right? They call it the firmament. Then you have the fourth heavens, right? Okay. Which, that's where the unseen realm is. This is where things get played out in the spiritual, then it plays out in the physical. So every in the fourth dimension, that's where things are being played out. And whatever you see, that's all being dictated in that fourth dimension. Right? Whether it's a plane that goes past your head, whether it's a helicopter, right? Whether it's someone that just fell over, right? 
whether it's someone that's walking your way. That's all being played out. This whole thing about man controls his own... No, you don't. Right? I mean, no, the Heavenly Father is in the spiritual realm. His son, Yahweh Shai. Then you have Satan, which is an angel that works for the Heavenly Father. He's not... He's not, um, he's not rebelling. Uh, he rebelled against the heaven. No, he's in order. He's in order. And how do we know that? Go to Job. We're going to go to Job. Bear me just a minute. Ephesians 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities. Go into that word, Baba Kasha. Princi and when you go into wrestle, it says contest between two. And one each in the vows to throw each other over. When you wrestle, right? You're trying to get your opponent to the ground. Right? When she's decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hand and upon his neck. And that's what the enemy's trying to do. Hold us down. Right? That's what he's trying to do. Right? And when you go to principality, it's RK. RK. The highest form of spirits within this kingdom. Because there's different hierarchies to Satan's kingdom. There's different forms of hierarchies. There's different spirits. Right? And it says RK. Right? Like an ark. Okay? And it says, Baba Kishar, you got to remember, we're living, in a, we're living in the kingdom of darkness, even though we have the light upon us. And we're shining that light. And we're casting down them principalities, them strongholds. Okay? And it says, and against powers. So the powers of this world, they're evil. Against powers. That, and when you look up that word powers, it's authorities. Authorities, man. Yeah, the, the authorities are, are these networks, right? Which, the next lesson, I want to go into that. Right? These networks. Okay? And it says, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I keep telling you, spiritual warfare is not a joke. Woe to the faint-hearted. Right? Woe to the faint-hearted. Okay? And it says, Baba Kusha. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual. Key thing, it says high places. When you go to the new translation, it says heavenly realms. I just told you about the heavenly realm. The what? The fourth dimension. Heavenly realms. This is... Any attack that comes from the enemy... Rat begins in the heavenly realm. That's because, yeah, Satan is watching you in the heavenly realm. And now we can't watch everything. That's why he has foot soldiers. Those that have sold out to Satan. Those that are part of the lodge. Right? They're his foot soldiers. Because we know Satan can't be everywhere at once. Okay? So we, we went to that Baba Kishar. And Satan, I laugh at you. <laughs> Satan, you're done. Yahweh has defeated you. All, all Satan can do is try to intimidate, you know, try to intimidate, cast out. That's all Satan can do, right? You deceiver, copycat leader. Yahweh has defeated you. He's already won. Give it up. And it says, Baba Kasha, Ephesians 6 and 13, Wherefore take under you the whole armor of the heavenly Father that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. So you're taking the whole armor. You're... You're, you're applying what needs to be applied for that time, for that trial, for that situation. But you may be able to withstand in an evil day and haven't done all to stand. You ain't really see, we ain't really seen nothing yet. You ain't really seen nothing yet. Right? And your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shoulder with preparation of gospel of peace, having all, above all, taking a shield of faith. Wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. So then darts are being shot at us. In the spiritual realm they're being shot. But it just, is, it plays out in the physical. It plays out in the physical. Right? So now we went to that. Right? And you know when I was going into that word, right? When I was talking about wrestle. It talked about hold opponent down with his hand upon his neck. And this is spiritual. Because, again... Go, let's go to Mark 3 and 27. Let's explain that. Now, the enemies always... He's, think, of it, think of it as military. Think of it as war. The enemy, right, in war. His whole thing, how can, he, how can he defeat you? So the enemy will always strategize 
by using people, right? Weak vessels, those that don't believe. That's who he's going to use, right? Go to Mark and he's going to look for a gateway to get into your mind because what was what's it said? Your mind is what they say it, the devil's playground, right? So he's going to try to use what your mind and your thoughts against you. That's what he wants. Remember, the devil, he wants, he wants souls, right? That's what he wants, okay? And he, he's, taking as much, he's trying to take as much souls with him as he can because he knows his time is short, Revelation 12 and 12. Okay, go to Mark 3, right? And jump straight to verse 27. You know what? Let's go to verse 23 because they were trying to say our Lord was basically casting out demons by Beelzebub. And how can Satan cast out Satan? If he, if he, if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So, no, Satan can't cast out himself. Satan can't cast out himself. An unclean spirit can't cast out an unclean spirit. It makes no sense. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. So you have these masons, warlocks, people that want to join fraternities, the occult. They're divided against themselves. They're divided. Right? And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rises up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. That's how we know he has an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house. I looked up these words as well. Bear me just a minute. And when you go into a strong man's house, it says, Isacross. Isacross. Of one who has strength of soul to sustain attacks of Satan. Strong. Strong. And therefore exhibiting, um, proving many excellences. Okay. Let's go back into this. Mark 3. And jump straight to verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods. So that's what the enemy is trying to do. Enter into your house. Your vessel. Right? And spoil his goods. Except he first bind the strong man and he will spoil his house. Right? So you cannot enter into a strong man's house unless you bind him first. Right? So... The enemy would try to bind you, have you bound, right, by sin. But no, 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 what we do, we bind the enemy, all right, by the spirit and power of Yahweh, by, by these words, right? And that's why we have to be as disciplined as possible, okay? And spoil, hold on, did I go into that word that said spoil his goods? Hold on. Oh, yeah, spoil his house. When you go into that word spoil, it's plunder, right? Plunder. In the Greek is dia, dia puzzle, dia puzzle in the Greek. Plunder. So the enemy's looking to plunder our minds. Plunder. Right? And this is why you're seeing certain brothers, you may see certain things, the coughing, the sneezing, um, the directed conversations. All that is an attack on your mind, on your psyche. That's all it is. It's all an attack on your psyche. Right? To get you doubt in yourself. That's why it says that's why the word for man's strong house was I cross. Right? So that's who it is. Because the devil knows he has a short time. He's trying to do everything he can. And if he can't get you by old sin patterns, he's gonna try and get you mentally. That's why you have to be strong. Right? Spiritual warriors only for the mentally strong and those that have faith. Okay. So now we went to that now. Right, about the strong man. Have we finished yet? Yeah, we finished on that. Right. And now let's go to Luke 11. Right. And this still ties in with the strong man, binding that strong man. Let's go to Luke 11. Right. And 24. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walking through dry places. <laughs> An unclean spirit. Dry places. Right? And there's a lot of unclean spirits out here. A lot of the people that you see, when you wake up to the truth, you realise they have unclean spirits upon them. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walking through dry places. Empty, desolate places. That's why a lot of people with unclean spirits, where do they dwell? They dwell by tombs. They dwell by... um. 
empty buildings, you know, um, desolate buildings. Yeah, bro, a lot of people with unclean spirits dwelling in what desolate buildings. Because there's spirits there, right? And but and you may see a lot of flies. You have, you, have, you ever, have you ever seen a certain location and there's loads of flies there? That shows there's an unclean spirit there. Or you go around the bin, that bin is surrounded but like a horde of flies. That's the Lord of the flies. That's an unclean spirit. And it says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walking through dry places. Dry. Right? And this thing about a spirit, by the way. Seeking rest and find if none. Doesn't find any at all. None. So that spirit is seeking rest. It's seeking a place of a bowl. Because this is what you got to understand. Spirits don't die. Spirits are just, what, translated to one place to another. That's all. And seeking rest. So that spirit, remember that spirit. You know when you wake up to this truth, it's like them spirits get taken off you. I remember that as well. I was amongst brothers and brothers are teaching the word and you can feel them spirits coming off you. That's what this word does. This is what this word does, man. It takes them spirits off people. Right, some, not all. And it says, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he's walking through dry places seeking rest. Right? And findeth none. Right? Find none. No rest. He saith, I will return unto my house. So that spirit is looking to return, yeah, to your house. What's your house? Right? Your house is your body. Your house is your body, right? So this is this is what this is what the, this is what Satan's looking to do. Possess as much vessels as possible. Right? I will turn back to my house once I came out. Right? So he's looking to return. So this also keeps, keeps us um, vigilant and circumspect and unfair because we always know that old man always wants to get back. That unclean spirit always wants to get back in your vessel. Right? It's always looking for an opportunity. This is why you've got to take this thing seriously. You've got to take this truth seriously. And it says, I will return to my house once I came out. So it wants to return. You know them old sin pack? It wants you to return back to what you were doing. And when he come, if he find if it's swept and garnished. Swept. So swept is what is decorated, right? So when that spirit comes back to your vessel to see how you're doing, right? It finds it swept and garnished. This is what I always say to brothers. We're in a time now where we want to be more diligent. You don't really want to be, you know, waiting, what, four or five days to do a lesson or studying. You ain't done no studying. You ain't watched no videos. Bro, by that time, Satan's already looking at you like, bro, I'm going to get you. I'm going to jump right back in you. Right? I'm, I'm asking myself, do you men really read these scriptures and apply it? Remember, see, this is the thing. This is why you see so many people that are demonically possessed. Because they're not, they're not guarding their mind. They're not guarding their mind. And it says, Baba Kasha, check this out. <sighs> and it says, And when he come, if you find if it's swept and garnished, decorated, embezzled, now, now you're, now you're, <laughs> now, now you're, you're, it's, it's garnished, it's swept out. This is someone that's not thinking about the truth at all. Okay. And that's why Satan will try to tr come distractions in your way, distractions and so forth. Right? And when he cometh, he find if it's swept and garnished, then he goeth and he taketh with him seven other spirits. More wicked than himself. So, that one unclean spirit, guess what it does? It brings his buddies. Oh yeah, it calls his buddies. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on. That's what it does. And it brings his buddies. And now they're buddies. It's a seven. That's completion. Right? And the last state... Right? And they enter in what to your mind, man, your mind. So these spirits wanna wanna lodge in your members, in your mind. They wanna have you bugging out. Right? And dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. You're in a worse position than you were when you first came in the came in, in the truth. And don't think that can't happen. You're in a worse state. Right? Worse state. Okay. 
And that's why when we go to Ephesians as well, check what it says. Hold on just a minute. You, you, that's, you want to know why I take this truth so seriously? This is why I take the truth so seriously. Because you don't want to fall victim to the enemy. Now let's go to Ephesians 3 and 27. It says, give, neither give place to the devil. He wants place. Where does he want place? In your life. He wants place. He wants your undivided attention. Right? That's what he wants. He wants, he wants your undivided attention. Right? Because do you really think, look, you got to ask yourself, what, what, does, what does the enemy, what, what, what don't he want you doing? Uh, he doesn't want you praying. Doesn't want you fasting. Doesn't want you to be brotherly. Doesn't want you studying. Right? Okay. He doesn't want, he doesn't want you to have faith. So he doesn't want you to have a connection with you have a shy. So when distractions, when people do certain stuff, well, you got to know where that's coming from. Or you got to say, duh, well, that's coming from the left hand side. Whatever's trying to stop you from getting closer to Yahweh Shai, yeah, obviously you put two and two together and you know that's coming from the left hand side. That's not of the Heavenly Father, that's coming from the devil. Okay? So we went to that. So with this, I'm going to shut off here. And yeah, this is part of spiritual warfare. Right? You go to certain places, right? Up on earth. You could example London, right? You might go two miles away, three miles away, and there's a whole different spirit in that location. Then you may go five miles away, and there's a complete different spirit. Because Ephesians 6 and 11, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Right? There's different hierarchies within the kingdom of darkness, which we are dwelling in today, but we're in light. You have different areas, they have different vibrations and energies to them. Speaking of energy, that's what my next lesson is going to be up on, right? So, Lord, I'm going to shut off here. Lord willing, this was edifying. And until the next one, shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom.